Hey guys, it's Marla and I am here today to go over the tutorial from the video of the mini purses that I posted a while back. Um, there's been a lot of questions and requests for the tutorial and I am very sorry it's taking me this long to get it done, uh, but I wanted to do it now. So what I'm going to do is go over the steps and show you on the screen everything you need to do to get it from the Silhouette store over to the Cricut Design Space. Um, if you have any comment, uh, if you have any questions, just throw them in the comments, but also feel free to email me. My email is in the description box below. So we'll go ahead and get started. I am choosing this particular one to bring in and start from, but understand that a lot of the same techniques are going to be relevant to the other purses so it should be fine once you see it um, so I am actually in the design store and as I talked about in this previous video that I just did on printing out digital paper this will be the same type of deal if you haven't seen it I will link that below in the description box if you have any questions about the paper itself or how to print off digital paper, please take a look at that and then you can come back here. So I'm going to work with this box. I have already purchased this, so I am going to go ahead and just download it. That's why mine says download. Now, um, as you can see, um, I have a studio file. That's how it normally comes in the design store so if you want to buy the SVG you have to click the SVG box in order for it to have the two files now when you check out you will also have it the option to check SVG in order for this to work in Cricut Design Space you have to have the SVG format of this file so I'm I went ahead and clicked on it and you can tell that I already purchased the studio um, file but for some reason is telling me I need to purchase the SVG even though I already have it but for the sake of this video I'm gonna go ahead and click on that just so you can see the process so it's charging me an extra dollar and twelve cents for the SVG file so when you do purchase something from the silhouette design store understand that the the price and it's a little hard to see because I have this over top of it but it's showing the price as like for this one $2.99 when you click on the SVG box it's going to add an additional cost to it so um, that's where we're getting this number from now unless you really want to do this right now Silhouette always has sales and so always I mean all the way up to 50% off So it might be just beneficial to wait until the next sale sign up for the email notifications And you'll know when all the sales are I believe right now they have some Mother's Day sales that are going on but um, again, you can go ahead and purchase it or you can wait and uh, Wait for the sale to come and then go ahead and purchase it there so I'm going to go ahead and put this in my cart. Went ahead and did that. I'm going to go over to my cart. And as you can see, I go through here quite frequently and just look at different things that I might want and put it in the cart and wait for a sale to come. So right here is what I was referring to. Um, you can click on the SVG. It will If there is an SVG file for any of the files that you want to grab or pick up uh, just click on that and it will add the cost automatically to it so this particular column is asking if you want to purchase a license for commercial use of this pattern I personally don't sell anything um, so I don't need the commercial license so I don't really know that much about it as far as what you can and cannot do with that so um, you might want to research that if that is the the plan that you have so here's our purse file um, here's the design uh, number on it and we're gonna pay this dollar and twelve cents these I believe are on sale because they are Mother's Day so I will do another video 
um, to do a compare and contrast against the subscription for Silhouette versus the subscription for Cricut. But just so you know, that's why my total is zero because I do have a subscription with a Silhouette. So it says it's $5.35, but I'm paying zero because this month I still have credits available in order to purchase that. So I'm going to go ahead and check that out. And then it will ask you for your password. All right, now you're finished with your order and what you can do is you can just hit direct download and you can get the, the files that you just purchased. So um, you can always go back and download them later. Uh, for this video, I'll just go ahead and hit direct download. Again, I have a Mac and in Safari, my downloads go right up here to, um, you probably can't see it, so I apologize, but there's a little arrow and it pops down and it can tell you um, what you downloaded. So this is what we downloaded. When you download an order from the Silhouette store, it comes in a folder and it will tell you this is like the order number, which is right here and it shows you. And again, I apologize for, let me move that. There we go. You, here's your order number and part one of one. Now you can click it from here, but you can always go to your downloads folder in your finder window or in windows i think it's still called windows explorer i'm not not really sure i apologize for that so if you go ahead and click on that here is what you get from the store when you when i purchased those files all the ones that i wanted i got all these files they all come with a license attached to them, which again, if you're not using a com it commercially or selling it, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, and then it shows you, you get your studio file, which means you can go directly into the Silhouette Studio and use that if you need to use it with another machine, such as a Cricut machine, a Brother Scan and Cut machine, or any other cutting machine that, that uh, uses SVG files that would be here. So here we have our purse, 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 purse box um, file showing here, and here is our SVG file. So we're going to use our SVG file and pull that into Cricut. So we're going to hit New Project, and we're going to hit Upload. When you hit Upload, this is going to come up. There's two different ways to upload files. One is an image file, which tells you all the formats that it will accept. So let's go ahead and upload the image. Then we have here, now I find it easiest to just drag and drop in here. And I just covered it again. Well, goodness. Okay. So we're back at our our window that showed what we got in in our download now you can either browse and go to the the folder that has it or you can just drag and drop so I'm going to drag and drop the purse SVG and go ahead and put it in there so I'm going to now you're going to get this don't worry about that so we're going to just hit continue and here's what it looks like after we imported it. So here is where, uh, just so you know, once the image comes through, you can change the name of the image here and you can put tags on it. So just an FYI for everyone, once you pass this stage, you cannot edit the tags or the name without deleting the file and starting this all over again. So if there's something that you want to add in here, please do it now. Um, I know because it drives me nuts. And when you don't put the tags in there, if you are searching for something in an image, it will not show up. So for this particular item, this is the design number and this is just the name of it. So usually when I pull in files from Silhouette Studio, I'll use the file Silhouette. Um, for this, I'll put cut file since it's not a print and 
print and cut is just a cut file um, purse gift box favor box and any other um, oh and I usually put 3d so any tags that or any keywords that you search for because that's what a tag is is a keyword that you want to find a design try and add it in that box so you can find it later so I'm going to hit save and there it is so now we're going to click on this and now that we've selected it we're going to insert the image into into our space our design space now when it comes in you can see here that it's at two inches 2.78 inches wide that is not very big and that includes the folds on the sides so what you're going to need to do is go ahead and resize it to whatever size you want it to be now right now something to remind you of is this is the lot the proportions are locked do not unlock this while you're resizing it that will keep its shape and keep it appropriate and it won't uh, make it look crazy so we're going to go ahead and make this bigger so the only thing to think about when you are making it bigger or smaller is depending on the paper that you're going to cut it from I have a lot of eight and a half and eleven by uh, by eleven paper so I tend to use that much more often than a 12 by 12 especially if I'm using um, printable design paper from the web you're gonna more than likely print it off on eight and a half by eleven so I kind of keep that in mind when I'm sizing it um, boxes like this I usually try to make as big as possible just because it's easier if you want to put candy in them or whatever you want to do um, the only other thing I will tell you when you are bringing it in and you're playing with the size if you're not sure what size you want or what you have in mind to put inside or is going to fit make sure you go ahead and test it on you know not the great not your best cardstock and do some test runs see if it fits and then figure it out uh, see which size you like and make sure you write it down somewhere so you know for next time so I am looking at the grid lines and that's a good way to measure too is that right here we're at about I would say about seven and a half inches for the whole thing now I mind you this is really the bottom of the box is this little square a rectangle rather so I usually try and maybe line up those lines and kind of take a look here so we're at about here so that's one two three so a little bit over three inches for this um, it's not that big I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger still paying attention to what I have because if you get too close to the eight and a half or eleven measurements it will give you an error and it won't cut so I think that that is pretty good um, so we're going to move that again to line up this line with any of the lines so you got one two three so we're at almost four inches see if we can all right I don't want to go too far cause an error so I'm just trying to get it to that line okay <clears throat> so now here is what's key when you're bringing files in from silhouette is these these right here these little dotted lines are score lines that's what those are for so you can fold the purse on these score lines these are actual pieces that are going to get cut that are going to go here this one's going to go here this is for the front for the little buckle and this right here is the flap in order to put this um, 
for it to fold in. And so if you look here on this side, you will see cut. We do not want this to cut. And that is the biggest thing for you to remember going through this and bringing it in. I'll, now, not all files from Silhouette, sometimes it doesn't format. It doesn't come through and change the format. But for the most part, as a general rule, always check those score marks and make sure they're score marks versus cut lines. So you just go right up here to line type and you see there's cut and there's draw and there's score. We want to change it to score. So that's going to change all these into score lines. And the reason that it's going to change all of them at once is because they are grouped together. That's why they're on one line. That is not necessarily always going to be the case. You might have score lines that are um, away are not grouped together. So please make sure you look for all the lines, anything that has a dotted line in your in your file that it, it is marked a score and not cut. Now if you look here, it says cut and that's what you want it to do because it's going to cut the outside of this shape. It's going to cut this. It's going to cut here. This does need to be cut because this is the flap that this is going to fall into in order to keep the purse closed. So we want it to cut an opening there. We want it to cut the outside of this shape and we want to cut this, which is just another, another flap that's going to go. And again, these are cut. Now you can change these colors if you want, if it makes it more easier for you to know what color paper to put in because it is, it is putting them together as it's going to cut on that piece of paper. Now, this to me works absolutely fine because it doesn't matter if it's black or white or red, any color, it, was, it won't matter, but it'll make sure it cuts this piece, this piece, and this piece all from the same color paper. These are going to be cut from different color paper. So now that we've done that, all we have to do is go into the make it. And so here is the other thing that I want to make sure that you guys see. So the score lines are now score lines, which is what they should be. But you see they're, they're separate from the cut lines, right? And that is not what we want to do. We want to make sure that these score lines are done on this piece and not separate. The other thing is um, this is coming in and it is a different color red and we want to make sure that it's getting cut on the right piece of paper. So let's cancel back out. Okay, we're back in our mat in Cricut Design Space. Now what we're going to do is make sure that the score lines that are here are going to score on this cut, which is the box of the purse. We also want to make sure that this is cutting on black or the same color as your purse, whatever color you choose, and that these color these are cut out of a different color if you choose. If you would like them to all cut out of black, then just turn them all black. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to select everything, and then we're going to ungroup. Okay, now that we've ungrouped everything, we're going to select the score marks, and I'm going to hit the shift key and select the cut. So even though it looks like everything is selected, the only things that are selected are here. That's why I use this side box. These are still light gray, and you can then move this off to the side. And it's okay if you move it to the side um, as far as it's going to still cut together, and it's going to be on the side of the mat. It's just for this purpose right here. So what we're going to do with this is move this a little bit farther so we're not selecting any of these. So in order for the score marks to be on this cut, we need to attach this to the mat. So what I'm going to do is take these, and I'm going to just take my mouse and select all of them, 
and it does the same thing just with your mouse. All these boxes are now selected. I'm going to move this a little bit farther out of the way. I'm going to do the same thing over here and select these and we're going to move them back over here just so we're not on the too far out of the way. This is just my own con um, convenience. So with this, we're going to go ahead and attach this to the map so that knows that the score lines are attached to this cut. So these, these items over here, what we want to make sure is these items, the cut and this cut are together. So let's move this up here and let's make sure when we select cut, if you notice when I just select the cut of this, the color shows red. Any time that your color is different, it's going to have a different mat in Cricut Design Space when it goes to cut. So you want to make sure everything that you want cut on the same mat is the same color. So um, whatever color you have chosen, um, mine is black, I'm going to switch it to black. And now we should all be on one mat. So let's go over to make it. All right. So you will see right here, here's where your problem lies, is if you get this, it's not a big issue, but you just need to go back and fix it, is this cut needs to be in this box. So you're gonna cancel back out, and you're gonna select both of these again. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna attach that. It's the same idea that we did here to attach the score lines to the cut. Um, you just want to make sure it's going to cut in this piece. So let's go back to make it. And now we're all set. So if you look right here, we have our score lines that are with our cut. We have our cut line that is with our little square here. And they're all on one mat because they're all black. Our second mat is showing everything as one color. So this is gold. Um, the only other thing to tell you is to make sure you pay attention here what your material size is. Mine, I am going to switch mine to 8.5 by 11 because I always cut on that. And as you can see, it moves some pieces around to fit within 8.5 and, and 11. If your pieces are too big and it won't fit, you might see it add an additional mat. It's not a big deal, it's just you need to use two pieces of paper. But we had enough room here and Cricut positioned everything so it's going to be cut on one piece of paper. Then we have our second mat. I'm going to go ahead and move that to 8.5 and, and 11 and then it's going to cut on the two different colors so it will it will let you know when to cut it. Um, just so you know when you go down here and you make this change make sure you go back up here and select mat number one. I say that because if you're selected mat number two and it's a different color paper, Cricut is going to start on two. So if you put in your black paper and you were you were on two, it's gonna cut this out of black paper. So that's just a, a just remember always after you make all your changes here for size of paper, go back to mat one, then hit continue and then it'll start. So when you, when you go to hit continue, it's going to come to the screen and it's going to say set material to cardstock. Now if you're cutting out of different material, make sure you do change your dial on your Cricut. But it tells you right here, which is important, load tools and material. It's telling you here, load your scoring stylus in clamp A and then you should already have your, your blade in, in clamp B. But this is just a reminder, if you are doing a project in Cricut um, and you do need special tools or you need a pen or you're writing on it, it will tell you here. Um, so I know it's real easy to like go past it and not pay attention because I've done it plenty of times, but I just wanted to remind you, it is here to, to remind you to put your stylist in. So that is it. So I hope this helps. Um, I will try and make some other videos uh, soon here to give you some more tips and tricks on uh, on your cricket. So thank you so much and talk to you soon.